Hello everybody and welcome to Out of the Short Box. This is Josiah McComas. And today we're going to do a little bit of hero history, as we have been uh, continuing our Justice League uh, Dark series. We're going to be talking about Swamp Thing. Uh, so, uh, um, some folks have heard of Swamp Thing, some people haven't. Uh, I know me growing up as a child of the 80s and 90s, kind of that mid-gap uh, mid uh, uh, type uh, generation, uh, I definitely heard of Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing had a couple inc- different incarnations when I was growing up with both a movie and a television series. Uh, but today we're going to talk about uh, the history of this comic book character because it's actually a very... Uh, impactful for comic book history. Um, there was a famous run that uh, many current comic book creators attribute to them getting into the business, uh, contribute to them uh, in wanting to write comics and how they've changed comics and how it is. So I'll give you a little bit of history on uh, this character so we can get right into it. So uh, Swamp Thing was created by Lynn Wein and Bernie Wrightson. Uh, Lynn Wein is one of the most famous writers and contributors to the comic book world. He was also an editor for DC for a long period of time. Uh, He did work for Marvel. He did work for some of the independent comics as well. Uh, Lynn was very impactful. He was a great writer, great talent, um, and he he just had a unique... uh, unique way of bringing things to the forefront. He was a very uh, creative man. And Bernie Wrightson uh, was probably one of the, also one of the greatest artists slash writers there was in the comic book industry. And Bernie had a lot to do, especially with the success of young characters in the young eight, in the early 80s with uh, DC Comics. Um, so Swamp Thing was first released actually in 1971 in House of Secrets number 92. And the first Swamp Thing uh, was a little different. Uh, first, the first, most fans of Swamp Thing, even if you've seen him in the cartoons in the DC animated universe, uh, know him as Alec Holland, and that's the traditional Swamp Thing that we accept. However, the first Swamp Thing that we were introduced to, the name was actually Alex Olson, um, and that was the one that was introduced to us in House of Secrets number ninety-two. Uh, when DC realized, though, that they had uh, a very popular character, uh, one that was really gaining steam. They ended up changing the name uh, and the backstory a little bit with uh, Swamp Thing number one, and that's where we were introduced to uh, Alec Holland as the Swamp Thing. Um, so uh, the first run, actually, of Swamp Thing number one actually established most of the mythos that those of us that know Swamp Thing uh, accept. Uh, It gave us Anton Arcane as his main bad guy, and it also established his relationship with Abigail. Um, Abigail uh, Arcane ended up becoming uh, one of Swamp Thing's main love interests, as we find out uh, throughout the comic books. However, his second run is the most famous run of them all, and it it definitely established Abigail as his uh, love interest and his uh, motive uh, for for human connection. Uh, and that one was the very famous uh, Saga of the Swamp Thing by Alan Moore, which is a beautiful, a beautiful run. And I'll talk a little bit more about the Saga of the Swamp Thing a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and get to some origins of the character. I'm going to go uh, over both characters. I'm going to go over Alex Olsen, and I'm also going to go over Alec Holland as well, just so you know. Uh, So Alex uh, Olson, let me go ahead and begin with him. Alex was a young scientist in the early 1900s, so it's not a more modern, um, the more more up-to-date origin has uh, has Alec uh, being in, you know, whatever current time the run is doing. However, the Alex Olson run had him uh, being a scientist in the early 1900s, and he was married to a woman named Linda. His best friend and lab partner's name was Damien Ridge, uh, and Damien became jealous of Alex. Uh, he wanted Linda to himself. Uh, Damien was very much in love with Linda, and he wanted to have uh, Linda for his own, so he decided uh, to murder Alex. He decided to stage an accident and, and actually uh, cause uh, Alex's death, and, and when Alex would die... Uh, he would be there to console Linda, and then Linda would end up lo- uh, loving him and marrying him. Uh, so Damien ended up sabotaging one of the experiments that Alex was working on. Uh, well, the, it exploded, 
uh, it exploded and, 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 and hurt Alex and, and poured Alex with chemicals, but Alex still survived. And uh, when Damien saw that he still survived, he ended up taking um, he ended up taking his body. He ended up taking Alex's uh, battered and bloody body, and he took it out and he buried it in the swamp. Uh, well, as com- most comic book fans know, that's a bad combination to mix chemicals and, and, <laughs> and something else. You get a superhero out of it. So the mixture of the chemicals and the and, and the swamp ended up making him in the swamp thing. Now, it was a long transformation. It wasn't something instantaneous. Alex's uh, dead body uh, absorbed uh, stuff from the swamp, and he slowly became a swamp thing. So during this time, Linda, you know, presumed that Alex that uh, Alex was dead, and she did end up marrying Damien. Uh, Damien uh, Damien's plan seemed to have worked uh, up to that point. Um, however, as the marriage grew on, and and she was talking to Damien, uh, Linda started to piece things together. Uh, she started to uh, figure out that her husband's death was not an accident; that it was staged by Damien. And uh, Damien quickly found out that Linda caught on quickly. So what was Damien's solution? Well, he was going to kill Linda so it wouldn't get out and he wouldn't lose everything else. So during this time, uh, Damien was plotting the death of Linda. Um, Alex Olsen, the swamp thing, was spying on them and found out that Damien was going to kill Linda. So one night, Damien tried to kill Linda by uh, using chemicals and and a needle. And when he was uh, running at her with the needle, Swamp Thing busted through the window and saved Linda, uh, killing Damien. Uh, Now, after he killed Damien, uh, Linda looked over at Swamp Thing, and uh, Alex, as Swamp Thing, opened up his arms like he wanted to hug Linda, and he tried to speak to her, but... uh, she couldn't hear him because Alex no longer had vocal cords. Swamp Thing couldn't speak. So instead of uh, loving on her uh, husband that had came back, um, she screamed in, in terror, and Swamp Thing jumped out of the window, uh, realizing that he would never be able to love Linda again, that uh, Linda would never uh, love him again. And so it's kind of a sad, a really sad story for Swamp Thing, but uh, that's... Honestly, that's how it usually goes for Swamp Thing. He has uh, some of the the worst luck there is when it comes to these type of things. So, Alec Holland. So, the Alec Holland uh, version of Swamp Thing, that's the one that we all know. That's the most famous version. That's the version that was done in Saga of the Swamp Thing. That's the one that most all of us knows uh, from there. So, Alec Holland is... Uh, his, Background is similar in the fact that he was a scientist in Louisiana. However, what it has, uh, it flushed it out a little bit. Alec Holland was working on a biorestorative formula to help um, the environment there in the swamp um, to, to, to grow back some extinct species and to help restore everything to it was. Um, and Anton Arcane, who was a fellow scientist uh, and rival, wanted that formula, so Anton ended up sabotaging his lab so it would explode. Well, the lab exploded with Alec working there one night, and uh, when Alec caught on fire, he jumped into the swamp, and he actually died. <clears throat> this is the different the difference that we have, and this one was the one that was established by Alan Moore in Saga of the Swamp Thing. I know they've kind of reversed this back and forth, but I really like this version, so this is the version I'm going through. Alan Moore established in Saga the Swamp Thing that uh, when Alec Holland, when the lab exploded and he caught on fire and he jumped into the swamp, that he died. That Alec Holland actually genuinely died. And what happened was, Swamp Thing is an elemental entity, is an elemental power. And when his body entered the swamp, uh, the Swamp Thing sensed. Alec Holland and wanted to be one with his conscience, so Swamp Thing took over Alec Holland's body and his conscience. So Swamp Thing is actually just Swamp Thing using Alec Holland's body. Alec Holland is actually still genuinely dead. Uh, And it's an interesting take because it goes back into the mythos 
of the Swamp Thing being an elemental, which makes sense. And, and that was one way that Alan Moore was able uh, to establish the difference between Alec Holland and Alex Olsen, and the fact that Alex Olsen was just a different Swamp Thing. That, yes, they're, they're a little bit similar, but Alex Olsen was just another Swamp Thing out of many Swamp Things, and Alec Holland is just a Swamp Thing out of many other Swamp Things. And it gives us a, a, a chance to allow the comic book to continue without having to necessarily deal with Alec Collin, that the title of Swamp Thing can pass from person to person because it's an elemental power. It's the avatar of the green, as they call it, uh, that it's a, it's a power that's gone on, and, and it just swaps out consciousnesses from time to time. Um, some of the newer versions of Swamp Thing still wanted to make it to where Alec Holland is Swamp Thing, and that Alec still kept alive by Swamp Thing. Um, and, and that's okay, because it's still the elemental, but uh, again, Alan Moore's run, which is the most famous run of Saga of the Swamp Thing, um, it's the Swamp Thing is actually an elemental. Uh, it's a spirit, a uh, spirit of the green, an avatar of the green, like I said, and it just took over people's consciousness. Now, powers. What powers does Swamp Thing have? Swamp Thing is one of the most ignored uh, comic book characters, and I hate it because dude is OP. Swamp Thing is just straight up overpowered. Uh, He has full elemental control, um, and that means he can control all plant life, and sometimes he can control even water-based life. Um, It's so down to the fact that he can control elemental life when you read the comic book. Swamp Thing can even take control of even the minute uh, if you have a little bit of algae in your body, I mean minute microscopic algae he can control it from inside your own body and and make you be destroyed from inside out Um, any microscopic algae any microscopic sense of vegetation or anything connected to the green he can control and that also means that he's immortal as long as there's plant life uh, the Swamp Thing can continually um, remake himself. And that's what you see in Saga of the Swamp Thing. And some commentators, when they talk about this, they'll say, as long as there's plant life on the Earth. And that's not true. There just has to be some form of plant life anywhere in the universe that's established in Saga of the Swamp Thing. Because in Saga of the Swamp Thing, after he had his run in at Gotham, um, and he was attempted to be destroyed by Antar, uh, by uh, by Woodbridge, Doctor Woodbridge, and the FBI. Uh, Woodrow, I'm sorry, Woodrow, Doctor Woodrow, and the FBI. Um, he actually ended up um, in space on other planets uh, that had green vegetation. He he transformed himself there. He transported himself there. So as long as there's some form of vegetation, and that's what's cool too is. Alec Holland is Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing can 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 travel anywhere. He doesn't need to fly. Now the new Fifty Two gave him a set of wings to where he could control his body and he can sprout wings, and that's cool and everything, and that's great. But uh, Swamp Thing doesn't need that. He can actually travel uh, through plant life through the ground. Uh, that's how he was able to get from Louisiana to Gotham City. Uh, he was able to travel through through the ground and he was able just as long as he can pick up some vegetative life he ends up becoming uh, wherever he wanted to and he regrows his body time and time again so he's very powerful in that he has very much super strength um, so much so that uh, uh, he's even gone up against Superman and Superman's been uh, it's been toe to toe 50-50 match um so it's very good. So as far as my reading recommendation goes, I only have one reading recommendation for Swamp Thing, but it's the definitive one. It's Saga of the Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. It's hands down. You can get it in trade paperback form. It's still one of the most uh, most highly sold uh, trade paperbacks you can get. Um, and it, because it's so influential, uh, people like uh, Neil Gaiman and Grant Morrison said that the whole reason they even got in the comics was because of Alan Moore's run on the Swamp Thing. Uh, the saga of the Swamp Thing. It's that great of a comic book. Uh, and it was the first also comic book uh, that actually went against the Comic Book Code Authority. Uh, Alan Moore wanted to make sure that 
he uh, established certain things. He wanted to to give. He wanted to go into some more adult, some more mature themes, and uh, he just wanted to make sure that his story was told. So he he basically threw caution to the wind and said, you know what, I'm I'm going to publish this comic uh, without the comic book code, without the comic book code authorities' seal of approval. And after that, Alan Moore set it up uh, to where writers had more freedom. And you kind of had that freedom of speech back in comics uh, to where storytelling really took off. And we had some of the best stories that we that we know today. And that's all because of Saga of the Swamp Thing. So go to your local comic book shop. Uh, you can pick it up online, but again, I'm a big proponent for picking up at your local comic book shop. And get Saga of the Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing is awesome. He's also a member of Justice League Dark. Uh, that's why I talked about him. Uh, as I mentioned in the Constantine episode, that's where Constantine was introduced, was in Saga of the Swamp Thing. Um, so Constantine and Swamp Thing have a long, complicated history uh, that they usually always talk about. And they usually always end up partnering in Justice League Dark just because uh, Alec Holland is traditionally uh, laid back as Swamp Thing. He, he, he keeps people at arm's length. He's not comfortable with some of the other superheroes. Uh, but Constantine and Zatanna, those are the two he usually uh, cuddles up with the most. So go out and read Saga of the Swamp Thing. I hope you enjoyed this. Just a little bit of history of Swamp Thing. Enjoy that. Uh, many all know it was made into a movie in the 80s as well. Uh, wasn't great at all. It was okay. Um, but uh, And then, of course, they made the... Uh, television series as well uh, which went on for three seasons I believe three seasons of uh, of Swamp Thing uh, they mixed uh, histories there too you had Anton Arcane in, in, uh, in the television series as the made man guy which was comic book correct um, however you had Alec's wife being Linda uh, which in the comic book that wasn't really flushed out. It has been now in some of the re- reboots and the retcons, um, but in the original run, uh, Alec was dating a woman and it never really gave her her name. So, uh, But uh, we had those incarnations, and we're about to have a series coming up of Swamp Thing on the DC Universe. Uh, so, very excited. It's coming out in July, I believe. So, keep a look out. To, uh, and if you haven't gotten the DC Universe streaming app, go ahead and get it. Um, it's excellent because it has so much more. It's not just streaming DC-owned shows or Warner Brothers-owned shows. You can also get some uh, great comic books there as well and get uh, some DC uh, news. So, that's it for today. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Uh, like our page on Facebook. Uh, like our YouTube channel. Just search Josiah McComas and our YouTube channel come up. Got a couple videos on there now. Uh, so, like and subscribe and hit that bell. Uh, like us on Patreon. Support us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com backslash out of the short box. Um, just a dollar. I mean, if you support us just for a dollar, you'll get some uh, exclusive uh, member patron only uh, uh, material. Um, we're coming out with more of that every day. Uh, so definitely uh, look us up on Patreon.com backslash out of the short box. Uh, follow us on Twitter at McComas Josiah. And until then, I'll catch you in the next podcast.